let's address the elephant in the room in the cabin. Fits like a glove. For fall garden, we have a bunch of different things going. Something you don't really think about when you buy raw land. Oh, no, no. And time for some projects, baby. Get going! Go and get going, baby! We're Matt and Cass, a couple of adventure chasers seeking the roads less traveled in today's world. For the last three years, we've been living on the road. First, in our bus home Lady May, then our rad van Jolene. Our journey brought us through the wildest parts of the United States, from the crystalline springs of Florida to the incredible peaks of Idaho, and then spending six months internationally traveling all through Mexico. But today, we put the van in park to take on a new challenge, the building of a fully off-grid homestead in rural Tennessee. Good morning guys and welcome back. Uh, ranch life is early. We get up and start watering the garden around 6, 6.30 every morning. Got here in July and people don't want to usually do a fall garden but all we wanted to do is get our fingers dirty I guess and get into the garden to see what we can make happen. And so far, from the beginning of our garden, I'm not too mad about it. And from the recent stress and chaos with the cabin, all we wanted to do was focus on this garden to remind ourselves exactly why we're here and doing what we love to do. So I'm gonna go over there and give you guys a little tour. So for our fall garden, we have a bunch of different things going. We have green beans, beets, we have bok choy, which is probably doing the best out of all of our stuff. Uh, we have some spinach, some herbs, and different types of squashes that we are put, have put in. Um, so we actually have a decent sized little garden going for only being here for two months now, which is pretty exciting. Um, and we'll see kind of what comes up. These are actually seeds that we had from when we lived in a house like about four years ago. So we're kind of seeing if they are still good or expired or not. But we had them laying around. We're just using what we have and see what could happen. Hey baby. What's up? What are you doing over here? I am watering right now our acorn squash. I think I heard you tell them that the bok choy is doing the best, but I would say close running is our acorn squash and our spaghetti squash. So this is really exciting. Uh, these plants should do pretty well through the fall. Um, so we're expecting to get a lot of zucchini squash and a lot of acorn squash. And I don't know if you guys see what's in my hand or not, but this right here is running water. I know, big deal on the ranch. No more siphoning from water jug to water jug. We actually have the ability to run a hose through the property, water things, uh, fill up the van, I'm actually just about finished watering the garden. So let's go check out that setup. So this is our little outdoor plumbing setup. I saw that we have these 275 gallon IBC totes. Uh, we don't have our rainwater collection set up yet. So we're still doing runs to the spring with one of them, then bringing it back. And now we have this pump to be able to pump the water out of the one that we grabbed the spring water with into this tank. 
Then we have a non-collapsible hose that comes out of the IBC tote. That's important because this pump is sucking the water through so it can't collapse in on itself. And then we have our long hoses out to water the entire garden. We were originally running an extension cord out here to power this, but we've recently gotten this EBL 1000 watt portable um, solar generator. And that's been a game changer for powering little projects across the property because it's light and compact, but it still um, has enough wattage to power most of your easy power needs. Um, but it's been a lot more convenient in the morning rather than having a hundred foot extension cord running out from the van to just grab in this guy, plopping him down, plugging in the pump and having our 75 foot of hose to water the garden wherever we want it. We actually have a discount code uh, below in the description for this guy if you want to check him out. Hey, Mama! Hey, Mama! You're interrupting Dad! Yes. <laughs> Buenos dias. So now that the garden is all watered, it's time to make us some coffee. How's it going? Grinding some coffee. Hurry up, I'm hungry. Or thirsty. You're the one cooking. I know, but we can't eat. I think together. that showed you actually just need caffeine, huh? I do need caffeine. I made you own them. Oh, snap. <laughs> it's got blueberries. It's got blueberries. You weren't shy with the peanut butter, were you? Never. Better not be shy with that, PB. address the elephant in the room in the cabin so we have just kind of taken a break from stressing on that and like Cass said just going back to the point of why we're here focusing on the garden focusing on projects like that that being said we really want to thank so many of you for reaching out and trying to help the support that we got was really really overwhelming um, we got thousands and thousands of comments on that video. We got hundreds and hundreds of emails sent to our email with support and ideas. And then we also had a bunch of people jump over to our Instagram and DM us there. So we got like hundreds of DMs there. I was trying my best to keep up with comments as much as I could in the beginning, um, but after a while it was just overwhelming and we just didn't want our entire life to be engulfed with focusing on this one bump in our road, so we kind of took a hiatus with that. But I do want to address just a few of the things that were brought up time and time again in those comments. So first up with being tying it down to a permanent foundation. While I agree that the definition of a ready removable is satisfied by doing that. Uh, when we originally talked to the state, they said, no, tying it down to a foundation does not satisfy it. You still need to go through with the entire permitting process, um, which was the trouble all along. Second up, well, why the hell did you even contact the state? This was the first structure on our property that we planned to be a quick house for us to live in and be our home for about a year while we started working on other projects on the property. And after that year, we were going to use it as a cabin rental. So having all of these legal questions really were a concern to us. And originally, when we found this law, we didn't actually understand it. So part of us contacting was, hey, what is this about? I don't think it applies to us, but could you add some clarity? In regards to uh, potentially reconstructing the building or doing an add-on, that may be a possibility. We haven't made a final decision on what we're going to do with the cabin yet, but that's an idea that we have floated around. And lastly, well, if you didn't make your life so public, you wouldn't have to deal with that. For us, A, when this all started, when we got the cabin, we fully thought that what we were doing was legal. And then B, YouTube is something that we enjoy. It's traveling before the homesteading project and now building out this off-grid homestead. And we have really enjoyed sharing that journey over the over three years that we've been doing this on. And we have spent three years building this YouTube channel and building this awesome community here. So it's not really something that we're just gonna say, okay, never mind, give up on that. Right, enough of that stuff. We're moving on with our day and time for some projects, baby.
in the sun. You're blocking our solar. You're blocking our solar. He always does that. He likes to like sit right in front of these panels. I don't know why, him and Fogarty, they love to sit right in front of them and just take in the sun, just like our solar panels. Hi, honey. Hello, hello. What are you up to? Well, I just finished dropping the oil out, swapping out the oil filter. So just finished up with the oil change on the truck. I just gotta put the new oil in, and we should be good to go. Ugh. Jolene sits a little higher. I refuse to get jack stands out. <laughs> and in hindsight, maybe I should have. There's nothing like scraping every part of you across your gravel driveway with just a few inches of bumper. Look hot. <laughs> like temperature hot or? No. Mechanic hot. Mechanic hot. <laughs> oh yeah, I can do an oil change. <laughs> Such a mechanic. So throughout all of our social media platforms, we have been showing off our wildflowers here that we had no idea existed until they just started popping like crazy. They're these like bright yellow, amazing flowers and they're everywhere, literally everywhere on the property. It feels like, like follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> like that kind of vibe, like coming into the runaway ranch. They're like seven or eight foot tall, so they're huge. We actually looked them up. They're called swamp sunflowers. It's kind of like the, I don't know, what do you call it? The, it's kind of like the common name um, for them, but they're really, really beautiful. And if you actually like put your head in here, you can hear the bumblebees just like, like so crazy. So we've been talking, like maybe eventually we'll get a little hive. We'll do a little like beekeeping, um, which is something we didn't expect we wanted to do. But now with all these flowers and all these bees, like they're gonna love it. That should work. Next project up for today, something you don't really think about when you buy raw land. You need a mailbox. Our mail is going to be delivered at the main road, which is almost a half a mile away from the beginning of our property. So we got this bigger uh, locking mailbox that has kind of like a mailbox hatch that will allow some of our Amazon packages to be delivered. But for now, this is what's going to do. So I got my 4x4 pressure treated post. It's a lot cheaper to build one yourself than to buy one of the pre-made ones. So let's get building. this works is you mark off your three and a half inch slot for the other one to go you cut it in your uh, upright post you just make sure it fits in then you actually come back to the the post that's going to be supporting your mailbox and do the same thing so that they kind of sandwich together and almost sit flush the only problem is my circular saw can only get through an inch and a half and for a perfect uh, setting flush it would need to be an inch and three quarters so we're gonna have a little bulge but this joint makes the mount a lot stronger it also allows you to use a lot smaller screws when you go through this rather than needing like six inch screws to go through all this it's gonna be going through an inch and or almost two inches of wood into here all right guys moment of the truth here we have our slot cut on the cross post and the vertical post let's try to fit them together It's like a glove. The uh, the tight fit there is absolutely ideal because if you get it nice and snug like that, it already has so much support. Uh, and then you just drive a couple screws in there for extra support. Then we're good to put this in the ground. Honey, you're cleaning up. Yeah, I'm cleaning up. I always clean up. Always clean up. <laughs> 
I always go, oh, is she talking trash? I'm talking trash. She's talking trash. I thought I might have overheard her talking trash over there as if I don't clean up my mess or something. I think you clean up your mess. Don't clean up your mess. I repeat, don't clean up your mess. Yeah, what is this? Look at that. Put what it back in there. So, I'm keeping the main post at full length right now because we want where the mail slot is to be about 48 inches. We talked to our mail guy. I'm keeping it at full length, so once we dig our hole, I can see where it is and I can just cut it right there out by the road rather than miss cutting it right now and then ruining this entire project. what a potato looks like. Not a dog, but a starchy potato. <laughs> he's such a potato. He's out, Unfazed. Huh? Unfazed. <laughs> oh, he's stretched. Oh, big oh. puppy. All right, puppy dog, you stay there and rest up. Dad's gotta get back to work. You relax though, take it easy. Don't work too hard. <laughs> he literally never works too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like he's going fast back here. Y'all can see our wildflowers like down our whole road just coming up. Like, how amazing is that? Like, every day we get to just like pull into this like wildflower jungle. It's awesome. <laughs> it's just the grass. Can I try? Yeah, you can try. You can do the whole thing if you want. <laughs> I don't want to do the whole thing. I just want to try. I've never used this tool before. Drive it down as hard as you can into the hole. Like this? Yep. Well, no, you keep it open. Yep, drive it as hard as you can. And now spread open. And yep, no dirt. <laughs> there you go. A little bit of dirt. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> wow, this is crazy. Yep. It's a lot easier if it's been raining because then the ground's a little softer. And the soil around here is already a little hard and rocky. That was a good one. That was a good one. There we go. Look at me. How is it going, my love? Well, now that I've gotten the softer ground, it's going a lot easier. I had a little blister already and it just broke open, so I probably should be wearing some gloves. <laughs> <sighs> Gotta be responsible Sorry. here. Gotta be responsible. I've never done concrete, Matt has. This is just some fast acting, so it actually should be done in what, 30 minutes? 30 minutes. 30 minutes, so nice and quick. We'll put it up. We're not gonna put the mailbox up until probably tomorrow or the next day. We're gonna show you though. We're gonna show you though, because <laughs> it's a lot of anticipation for us not to show you. We're gonna show you, but it's gonna be in a couple days probably. We're just gonna let this sit and cure nice.
we're walking back to the road because the cement should be done by now and to see how it is. We're not sure if it was a little bit taller than we wanted it to be, but I think it'll be fine. Um, hopefully it's not leaning because I had to work, so we had to rush back and just kind of leave it there in hopes that it was going to be all right, but I'm sure it was fine. But let's go check it out. It looks like it's straight. It looks good. See how sturdy it is. So 30 minutes, it's been much more than 30 minutes. Give her a little. Oh yeah! It's pretty sturdy. And the top is still like not buried in. I'll finish that tomorrow. Looks like the concrete settled up really nice. Still just like damp, right? Not even, no. Yeah, so it's just setting a touch just more. Setting more. And I'll put some dirt to fill in the rest. Woo! Job well done. Wow. It looks good, box. huh? She's a mailbox. Let's go. Welcome to the future. We got the mailbox on, baby. She's looking pretty good. I don't know. <laughs> Being weird, you're tired, huh? I'm so tired. You're tired. I'm so tired. It was a long day. Yeah, now um, it's dinner time, though. Oh my god, look at these bullfrogs! We got our half mile walk back to the property. Now it's time for dinner. We are having trucha. Trucha, I was gonna say trucha. 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 Some grilled trout tonight. Pretty excited. It's something about the evenings here, the golden hours that just like make you just like take a second to breathe, relax, to grab a cold beer and just like start cooking on the grill and it just like kind of all comes together. Like this is very much the beginning phases of our homestead but it feels every time, any stress that we've had, any anxiety that we've had between the cabin and the heat and whatever else just totally disappears as soon as these evenings come. It's like Something magical just happens here when the sun starts to set and that golden hour sits in and I can just see people here enjoying it, my family, my friends, and like us, just us like out here just doing our thing and it's just, I'm getting a little emotional, <laughs> it's so silly, but it's like we worked so hard to be here and we keep continuing to work so hard every single day to make this our dream and Every little, every day, like a little bit more happens, a little bit more happens, and then eventually one day, this place is just gonna be transformed. So, I'm so happy you guys are here. I'm so happy that you're here, and that we get to share this with you, and that you get to be a part of this journey, and see this place go from nothing <laughs> to something. Um, and I'm just so thankful, and we love you guys and thank you guys for being here and supporting us. The world don't exist.